So after we have created our first enemy, and if we open here, we can see that we have created a simple mover with a side spawnable wave. I'm just now going to throw the AI mover with the side spawnable wave and the magnet mover, which is uh, technically a mine mover. Uh, and now just if you're wondering what, what does side spawnable means, if we go inside the scene, you see a side spawnable is something which uh, spawns from one of the sides. So for example, it can spawn from the top, from the right, from the left, top, bottom, etc. In the case of curve waves and waypoint uh, waves, you'll see that they, they have their own path and they will spawn from their first point. So, so that technically that's the difference in types of waves. Uh, maybe later on we can see a different way to, to manage things. For now, uh, let's just create an AI mover and explain how it works. I'll just go to edit, shmob boss the same way. Agents, create AI mover. And just the, the same way I've done with the first enemy. And I'm going to move it out of the way. And I will remember to place it under prefabs, editing, and testing. So that you, we don't have a duplicate inside the scene. And with this, I have uh, an AI mover. Let me just, mm, let's keep the values exactly the same. Just explain how uh, the movement uh, works. So the speed just determines how fast it moves. First move distance is after the this enemy has moved, uh, how far it will uh, it will go. For example, if it's, uh, it moves from the if it spawns from the top, uh, uh, first move distance of three, for example, means it would move three units over here. If I click on is drawing gizmos, I can see the distance. Okay, so the, the first move distance is not included in, in the gizmos. I can add it later on. Let's keep it at three. And the maneuver distance means uh, how far it will move. For example, uh, if it has a maneuver di distance of two, means it will move two points when it makes its maneuver. Uh, now the maneuver concept is just the, the way this mover works. So for example, it would move like this, then this, then this, trying to have different positions. And time before maneuver, it's uh, sort of the thinking time before it makes the maneuver. And the time for next maneuver is almost the resting time. It's Once you play with these uh, numbers or something, you, you can understand them more. And they are also included in the documentation. You have tooltips. The average collider width determines uh, when it will make the maneuver. To, to explain it, I'll probably need to just move it. For example, here, and let's create a simple cube and imagine it like this. Okay. So you have uh, your uh, AI mover, which moves like this. And wait a second, where is it? Yes. And you have the average collider width. Uh, an average collider width of 0.53, for example, means this box will be like this. And this box means whenever the player enters that box, the AI mover will try to escape. So that, that's the whole point of the AI mover. Once you try it, and now we'll try it, we'll see how it works. Let me just delete this one and put it back over here. And just double check the settings. They all seem to be perfect order. Just the let me increase the first move distance. The offset uh, top and bottom left right means that the, where the AI mover can move. Just let's move it a little bit like this. And just I, as I've done uh, previously, I'll go to the prefabs, make a 
prefab out of it and I'm going to create small boss wave side spawnable wave as well side let's make it AI and again if you notice that this one has a different name from this one I'll go into here let's just spawn one enemy and let's spawn it from the top with an depth index of 41 and because we only have one enemy we don't need to bother about uh, the time I'll go over here and place an AI mover just increase the time for the next wave save our scene and play So that's the AI mover. If, if I leave it alone, it won't move. Then if I come closer to it, it will try to make some sort of movement. So you, you probably won't need to use this for every type of enemy, a rare type of enemy, but it, it, it works. And that's the AI mover. Uh, and let's just very quickly create a mine mover. I'll just go to Schmob boss, agents, an enemy mine template. An enemy mine template uses this mover which is over here magnet mover side spawnable and it's uh, it has a different uh, enemy script called enemy det detonator which just have options for create damaging the player after it detonates so let let's me just add a visual for it and move it and I'll just play with the settings over here let's give it some explosion damage here let's make it big and explosion radius so if the player is inside this radius when it explodes uh, it will be affected by the explosion damage the detonation start radius is when will the mine sort of detonate, start detonating or tick as if it has noticed that the player is there and will start to explode and it will give you this uh, this time before it explodes for example let's give it uh, two seconds and it uses uh, the generally what's called magnet mover magnet mover can be used with anything with a pickup or something but because this one is will be spawned from a wave it needs to be side spawnable which will determine the initial direction. I, I know maybe, again, too much information, but once you use these things, or if you ent uh, enter the code and uh, see some of this stuff, it will be quite easy to understand how it's working. Let's give it a speed of three, and a magnet speed, let's give it a speed of two, and a magnet speed of four, or five, so that it's quicker once you enter the magnet radius, which is this one. So it's, once you enter this radius, it will start following you. Again, I'm going to drag and drop it inside the prefabs editing. This is important. And go inside the demo tutorials and drag it and drop it here. And again, uh, I'm just going to duplicate this uh, side spawnable wave and call it uh, side mine, whatever. Drag it and drop here. Let's make three mines each with a second and the same settings as the, as the previous one. Let's go to the finite spawner and drag this one instead. And save and play. So we have a mine. Now you see, uh, because we don't have any explosions or sounds, it's, uh, it looks funny, but it's working. But I probably should just uh, let it uh, explode yeah. Uh, in, uh, in the next tutorials, I'm going to explain the effects and it will make much more sense. Uh, but before that, I'll just end this one and we'll start with the other types of waves, which are pretty simple. Inside here, we just finished, for example, the side spawnable wave. The missile mover side spawnable, you can replace uh, the magnet mover side spawnable with the mine and it's, 
it's a, it just operates slightly different. There's no re really need to explain it further. And we'll go into the curve wave, curve mover, and waypoint mover. 